Hi guys, it's Angie with Fun Endeavors Tie-Dye Lab. Today let's make a V-Design Gravity Ice Dye. I have the shirt prepped like normal and I have it turned inside out. Initially I was going to do something different with this shirt, so I drew a diagonal line across the front of it. So just kind of ignore that diagonal line. And from here I'm going to start by centering the shirt. This process is going to go pretty fast, but I have a link to another video which shows how to center a shirt down below in the description for this video. Essentially what I'm doing is I'm getting both sides of the front of the shirt right up next to each other and both sides of the back of the shirt up next to each other. That way after the shirt is dyed, the front side is going to look more similar and so will the back. Using a ruler and a washable marker, I'm going to draw the V portion on the shirt. Here again, just ignore that other line that you see. Now I'm going to fan fold the line that I just drew on the shirt and tie it with some sinew. So the vision that I have for this shirt is to tie this V on the shirt and above the line, like up toward the neck part of the shirt, I'm going to scrunch that area and ice dye it and then allow the bottom portion to just gravity dye. So I'm excited to see how well this works. I'm tying this line with sinew because I want there to be some sort of a definite line between the scrunch portion, that's the V, and the gravity dyed portion. And because the sinew is wax coated, it's not going to allow any of the dye underneath this line. So this area is going to remain white and give me a good definition line between the two areas on the shirt. Okay, for this shirt, I've chosen some shades of green. For my setup, I have a couple of plastic sawhorses, and in between the plastic sawhorses, I've placed two long pieces of vinyl guttering. Then in between the vinyl guttering, I've placed a metal shelf. I've placed the portion of the shirt that I wanna scrunch on top of the metal shelf, and I'm scrunching the shirt and pushing pieces of the fabric through this metal shelf to try to hold the shirt on top of the shelf. I'm leaving the portion that I want a gravity dye hanging over the edge of the shelf. Before I begin applying the dye, I'm going to lightly spray the shirt with some soda ash solution. This is going to help the dye stick a little bit better and not blow around as much in the wind. I'm going to randomly sprinkle the dye over the scrunch portion of the shirt. I'm using Sea Glass from Dharma Trading Company, Lichen and Woodland from Dye Spin, Leaf Green and Evergreen from Pro Chemical and Dye. Now I'm going to sprinkle some additional dry soda ash over the top just to make sure I have plenty in the shirt after I force as much ice and liquid through the shirt as I'm getting ready to. Then I'm going to place a large chunk of ice that I made in a plastic container on top of the scrunch portion of the shirt. I've included some process photos so you can kind of see how the melting went. After the first chunk of ice melted, I came back and added a second chunk of ice and the dye started to move a little bit better down the shirt. It was a little slow going. After the second chunk melted, I came back and added a third chunk of ice, and it finally got to where the dye was reaching the outer edges of the shirt. To keep the part hanging down from drying out, I came back and sprayed it periodically with a little bit of soda ash solution. After the third chunk of ice melted and the dye had gotten almost all the way to the outer edges of the shirt, I took the shirt and put it inside of a container that has a metal rack down in the bottom, placed the lid on top, and left the container outside in the heat. After the shirt had processed for about 24 hours, I took it to my utility sink and began rinsing it. I rinsed it like normal, starting in cold water to rinse out the soda ash. Then I warmed the water up to hot, untied the shirt, 
and continued rinsing in hot water to try to rinse out any of the excess dye that didn't bond with the fabric. There was quite a bit of dye coming out of the shirt, so I just filled up a container with some really hot water, added a little bit of Blue Dawn dish detergent to the water, and allowed the shirt to soak. I changed out the water periodically and continued that soaking process until the water was almost clear. Then I put the shirt into my washing machine along with some of Dharma's professional textile detergent and I washed it using a hot water cycle. Then after the shirt was washed and dried, this is what it looks like. Okay, so what do you guys think? So I really like the shirt and I really like the color of the shirt. But for you all who've done quite a few of these gravity dyes, have you had any specific issues with particular colors? I have not had great success with green. It just doesn't seem to flow and move down the shirt quite as readily as some of the other colors that I've used. You know, I've used pinks and purples, earth tones, reds, blues, even aquas. Aquas seem to do better. But every shirt that I have done that's green, I have a really hard time getting the green to move as far down the shirt. I don't know. That's something very interesting. I may need to experiment with this a little bit more and see if it's just the color or if it's just a fluky thing. I don't know. This is like the second shirt that I've done that was green that I struggled to get the dye to go all the way down the shirt. Of course, this is the first time I've actually done this design with a V and doing part of it in a gravity die. So who knows? It could have something to do with the design too. But it's just an interesting idea that I had or a thought that I had. Let me know if you've done quite a few of these gravity dies and you've hit this same situation. Okay, so back to the shirt. I really love the scrunch portion up at the top. I think that looks really cool. I like the different color variations and I like the definition line in the V. I also really like how the dye streaks or streams away from that V portion of the shirt. I think that is a really cool effect. Now the rest of this shirt is one I'm not so sure about. As you can see, there are some areas that didn't get great color saturation and it's kind of spotty in different areas. I had that same problem in the last green shirt that I did. I also have quite a few like darker blobs of color or chunks of color, little speckles. So I'm going to tell you straight up, if you're somebody who does not like speckles on your shirt, I'm not sure that gravity dyeing is for you. It's kind of difficult to avoid getting some speckles on the shirt. I personally don't mind a few speckles on the shirt. I think they look really cool sometimes, kind of add to the design, especially when it's a color that splits because the speckles will be, you know, a variety of colors. But if you're somebody who really, really hates that look, I'm not sure this is the, this is the design that you want to go for. Because between the wind and just the dye falling, various things like that, it's really hard to avoid some of those things on a gravity dyed shirt but like down on the front portion of the shirt you can see there's quite a bit of it's not actually white but it looks white compared to the rest of the shirt and a couple little yellow blobs not really sure what that's about but it doesn't look horrible it's just not as flowy in the bottom portion as some of the other shirts that I've done I don't know, I'm about to give up on the gravity dye mixed with green, that's for sure. But like I said, I think the rest of the shirt looks really cool. I definitely like that top portion and the area right outside of the V. I think it looks really awesome the way that dye is moving. But what do you guys think? Do you have any experience with the greens or, you know, other colors doing this? Drop me a comment down below and let me know. And if you've enjoyed watching me experiment with this design mixed with gravity dye, I sure would appreciate it if you would like the video and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you all for watching and I hope you have a great day.